Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Hugh Freeze, the Auburn Tigers kicked off spring practice early in the month of March, and we've taken deep dives into each position room for this Auburn Tigers program. I want to take some time and give you guys my predictions on what this 2024 depth chart will look like for Auburn heading into that 2024 season. Really excited to get into this one. And I think my favorite part about this Auburn roster is you have a decent amount of returning production and veterans that give you guys, you know, kind of like a high floor in terms of what this team can be in 2024. But you have so much young talent that is not only going to be competing for starting spots, but gives this Auburn program, I think, a much higher ceiling than a lot of people appreciate in the world of college football. Really excited to get into this, highlight a few position battles before we do. And as always, just want to say, Thank you to you guys. It has been a blast talking this program, whether we're talking what they've done in the transfer portal, what they're doing on the recruiting trail, the position deep dives. You guys always show a ton of love, a ton of support to the boys. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And much more importantly, would love to hear from you guys. I'm going to give you my prediction for the 2024 depth chart. If there are players that I'm leaving out, some dark horses that you guys want to throw in, Put them in the comment section. I always learn a ton from you guys. I have a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with the most talked about position for this Auburn program, and that is the quarterback spot. And I feel like a lot of people are penciling in Peyton Thorne, at least people that are not necessarily that in tune with this Auburn Tigers program. And although Peyton Thorne very well could be the starter for this offense in 2024, I'm going to go Hank Brown. And the reason I'm going Hank Brown, a lot of the Auburn fans probably already know my reasoning. My reasoning is not the crazy arm talent that Hank Brown showed during Maryland. It's not necessarily the performance in the stat line that he put up. It's when you go watch Hank Brown take those reps. As a guy that worked primarily with the scout team during that 2023 year, this is a guy that came into that game and put together a, a, an offense that he looked to be in so much command of, right? The ball was coming out quickly. It was coming out on time. The offense was in rhythm. You saw them attack the deeper third. All things that we didn't see enough of from the quarterback play in that 2023 year, Hank Brown came in and did so. And my question would be, what does it look like with Hank Brown getting more opportunity in practice? Again, you fast forward back to this time at this time last year, I mean, you had TJ Finley, you had Holden Garner, then you had Peyton Thorne and Fall Camp. Hank Brown didn't get a ton of reps, and he still came in and played phenomenal football. I think Hank Brown is only going to improve with more reps, and I'm going to take Hank Brown to be the starting quarterback for this Auburn Tigers program heading into 2024 at the running back spot. I think this one is probably a no-brainer, right? Jerquez Hunter, your lead running back. I think one of the best running backs, not only – in the SEC, but in the country, I think the more interesting conversation is who emerges as that running back to between Demari Austin, between Jeremiah Cobb. And I'm going to lean Jeremiah Cobb because I think he brings kind of some game breaking ability that maybe Demari Austin does not bring, but you got two really good running backs behind one of the better running backs in the country, a loaded running back room for the Auburn Tigers. Now, the next interesting conversation is how does this wide receiver room shake out my three starting receivers for this Auburn program, it's going to be right what you see on the screen, right? Cam Coleman, and I think you got Jay Fair and Caleb Burton. And I think I'm most intrigued by, all right, how does Jay Fair and Caleb Burton get used? I think both of them are probably best in the slot, but I also think they're probably the second and third best receivers on this team right now. And I think the whole idea is you want to get your best football players on the field. Both Caleb Burton and Jay Fair do a phenomenal job creating separation in those short intermediate routes. And you have a guy in Cam Coleman who we've talked about plenty that can kind of attack that deeper third and maybe open some stuff underneath for guys like Caleb Burton and Jay Fair. I'll say this. We put a lot of expectations on Cam Coleman coming into this Auburn program, what he looks like during spring practice. And I get it's early, but just the body type, you watch some of the spring practice film and the videos, he <laughs> He looks different. Like He just looks like a different dude than the other wide receivers that they have. And you're much more confident in this wide receiver room than you were last year. I think you know who your guys are. And then you have guys like Robert Lewis, who was extremely productive at Georgia State. You have a guy in Perry Thompson who gets there in the summer. 
this is a wide receiver room that I don't think only the quarterback room is going to take strides. And I think this wide receiver room takes strides as well. And I think that's massive for this Auburn Tigers passing attack at that tight end position. No question about it. Rivaldo Fairweather, one of the best tight ends in the SEC, potentially one of the best tight ends in the country. Offensive line. And what I want to focus on with this offensive line is adding Percy Lewis at left tackle, who's my projected starter, makes this offensive line so much better. And here's why. Now you have Percy Lewis playing left tackle, who I think is going to be an upgrade from what they got at left tackle last year. But you also get to kick Dylan Wade into left guard, which is probably the position he's most comfortable with. So now not only do you get better at left tackle by bringing Percy Lewis in, you get better at left guard because Dylan Wade kicks in. He's going to be a very good left guard. You have Connor Lou at that center position who, I mean, I'm banging the table for this kid. I think he is going to be special. You talk about having a nail center for the next couple of years. I think that's going to be Connor Lou. Was phenomenal as a true freshman. Now on the right side of that offensive line, I think this is probably right. Jeremiah Wright at right guard, Xavier Miller at right tackle. Jaden Muskrat is kind of the guy that I'm keeping an eye on in terms of does he crack the lineup? Is he able to push for maybe that right guard spot, maybe even that right tackle spot? I think Auburn is in a much better spot on this offensive line than they were two years ago under that last year of Brian Harson. But more importantly, why I think this group might even be better in 2024 is I think it's deeper. Like you got a lot of competition, but you got a lot of depth. There are probably eight, nine guys that you probably feel comfortable trotting out for this Auburn Tigers offensive line. And I think that is massive for this unit heading into 2024. Now, going to the defensive side of the football, this is where I think it gets interesting because there are a lot of, I think, a lot of competition and a lot of true freshmen that I think are going to find the field relatively early. Now, on this defensive line, I think you got Keldrick Falk at that defensive end. I think on the other side, you have Jalen McLeod at that Jack linebacker. And I think both of those guys, I think you can be optimistic that they take a step in 2024, right? Falk was a, a true freshman that flashed some really good things. And Jalen McLeod was a guy that came from the group of five level. And you could tell that he was getting his feet under him that first half of the season. I think you might be looking at one of the premier pass rushers and Jalen McLeod at that Jack linebacker spot. And if he improves what he can do in the run game, taking on blocks, maintaining leverage, I think you're looking at a really good player in Jalen McLeod. Now, the interesting conversation at that edge spot is, all right, what do these freshmen look like? Because I think you got a couple guys that I want to shout out really quick. One, Amaris Williams, for the long-term Auburn listeners, I was a massive fan of this guy back when he committed to Auburn on signing day, he slowly rises up the rankings as signing day and as those final rankings come out. I think you're going to get a lot of production from Amaris Williams because he's kind of freaky in terms of the traits that he has. I think he can work at the jack. I think he can work as a defensive end. I think that's how athletic he is. Jamonta Waller, certainly a guy that I think can play a lot as a true freshman. And I'd even go as far as TJ Lindsay, who, again, at that defensive end role, a heavy-handed guy that can play the run game extremely well. I think you got three freshmen coming in and Waller, Williams, and Lindsey that can play a lot for this Auburn defensive line at that edge spot. And again, you talk about depth. This Auburn team is in a much better spot at depth in that position. Now, the one question I have in terms of depth for this Auburn defense, it is on the inside of that defensive line. And my projected starters are going to be Gage Keys and Trill Carter at that nose Trill Carter is a really interesting one. As a Big Ten fan, as a Michigan guy, I've seen a lot of Trill Carter before he got to Texas at Minnesota. And he was one of the better interior defense linemen that you saw in the Big Ten. Now, he goes to Texas. He sits behind three guys that are going to be playing in the NFL and didn't get a ton of opportunity. And I would think maybe took a step back in his play. I think Trill Carter is kind of a guy that might have been underrated a little bit in the transfer portal. And if you go back to the film when he was at Minnesota, this was a really good get for Texas. And I wonder if Trill Carter can come in and kind of find that form that you saw at Minnesota. He has that prototypical body, fire hydrant guy that can take on double teams. Gage Keys as well, I think is interesting to monitor. And I think this is probably a position that you have a guy like Jason Jones. I think that is a really, really solid football player. Wouldn't be surprised to see Auburn and Hugh Freeze go to the transfer portal and land one more guy on that inside. Because when you're talking about big bodies, you want to make sure those guys are rotating 
keeping fresh. That's a position that I'm monitoring during spring practice and then seeing if Auburn addresses in the transfer portal. Moving back to that linebacker spot, Eugene Asante, getting him back. If he would have gone to the NFL draft, I think it would have been a day two pick. Eugene Asante was phenomenal at that linebacker spot. He blitzes extremely well. He's very good in the run game, has the athleticism to go sideline to sideline. I think you're looking at one of the better backers in the SEC. And a guy like Austin Keys, I think, is going to have another good year. You look at Eugene Asante and Austin Keys, and what excites me so much about those two is they're both phenomenal at blitzing the quarterback. And I'm really excited to see what DJ Durkin can do with those linebackers because you go back to Durkin at Texas A&M, he loved to get those linebackers involved in the pass rush. And I think you got two linebackers that can really get after the passer from that linebacker position. Now, when you move back to the back end, you lose a lot of NFL production. I think they're going to be pretty strong back there. And I'm not going to go as far to say it's going to be as good as you were last year, but you got some really interesting puzzle pieces to kind of put together in this back end. I think the storyline I want to talk about is what do you do at boundary cornerback? You have a guy like Keontae Scott, who I think was really, really good at that nickel role last year. And I think the question is, Kay and Lee, Antonio Kite, if you feel really comfortable with those two at your boundary cornerback, I wonder if you put Keontae Scott back where I think he's best at that nickel role. Now, I think Keontae Scott certainly can play the boundary cornerback spot. I think he played a little bit of that in the bowl game against Maryland. I think he got three really good cornerbacks, and I kind of am interested to see where do you slot those guys because Antonio Kite's a guy that I know a lot of Auburn fans are really excited about. And at the end of the day, your job, Charles Kelly, DJ Durkin, your job is to get the best five defensive backs on the field. And if that is Keontae Scott at that nickel roll, that might be the case. And so that's my prediction is Antonio Kite and Kalen Lee on the outside. And then I think you have Keontae Scott at that nickel roll. Now the safety position, I think Jaron Thompson comes in right away and is one of those safety ones. This is a guy that has played a ton of football. I think Auburn was looking for a veteran safety that's played a lot of football that gives you a high floor. Jaron Thompson checks that box. The other safety spot, I, I'm going to go Caleb Wooden. And this is another guy that I think is a candidate to maybe move down to that nickel role. And that's kind of what I'm most interested in with Charles Kelly is you got a lot of interesting puzzle pieces. I throw in a guy like Champ Anthony. I throw in a guy like Terrence Love who has a lot of traits that you like in terms of all right, who's going to be the best five? And we talked about that with the offensive line. I think you're going to talk about that in that defensive back room. I guess that's a long way of saying I think you got Kay and Lee and, and, and uh, Antonio Kite at your boundary. I think you have Keontae Scott at that nickel roll. And then I think you have Jaron Thompson and Caleb Wooden in the back end. But again, a lot of different formulations, a lot of different combinations that you could have in that back end. This is going to be a really exciting spring practice to follow. Again, you're already seeing some things, really good things from some true freshmen. This roster is built with a lot of veterans, but also a lot of young talent that is pushing for those starting spots. And that's exactly where you want a depth chart to be heading into spring ball and into the 2024 season. We'll continue to keep you guys updated. Wanted to hop on, give you guys kind of my projected depth chart. We've talked about all these position groups extensively. That's my prediction. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Of course, if y'all do enjoy the content, you want to support the fellas, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.